Today I'm going to be sharing with you a new and updated for the third time a revision plan that can help you get organized and so by the time your exams do come about you're not going to have to worry about anything. The plan for both GCSEs and A levels are linked down below so if you want you could just check them out straight away and just get straight on with it. There are a few tips at the very beginning and how to use it as well which you can check out but I'm going to go through in as much detail as I can how to use this and how to use it as effectively as possible so stick around if you want to see that. And once again thank you for clicking on this video and I really really hope that you do find this useful and if you don't at least this video should have hopefully inspired you to actually start revising because if you're seeing this video right now it means that you need to get revising and if you're not revising right now you're either going to regret it later on or you're going to start a revision as soon as you click off this video so it's up to you which one do you choose anyways I don't want to waste any of your time let's just get straight on with the plan so this is the topic list tab. As you can see, I've put all these subjects here. And if you wanna add any more subjects, I've got like this empty placeholder at the right over here, which you can just add in however many subjects you have. So if I just start with the maths one here, as you can see, I've like listed all the topics there are for every single subject here. I've done them in different ways, depending on the subject. And you can always move things around. If you do a different exam board to me, you can change it up. I've written the examples at the top just so you know which ones I do, but I've also got them down below in the description as well. So for maths, let's assume I just opened the spreadsheet. I've got this blank document. Document, I just go down and I just think how well would I do a question on this so right now if I were to sit down and do a question on prime factors I'm gonna put like a three for example right so I'm I'm giving a strength out of five one to five five being the best one being the worst and I can just go down and just write what I think would be my strength for each of these as you can see I'm doing and if I put a one in any of these you see that this like exclamation mark appears and that's just so it catches your attention a bit more and then I've got these check boxes here which you can determine yourself what you you want to make it be so I could potentially just have for each time I practice this topic I tick one of these boxes so some of these I don't really need to practice like three times such as like prime factors that like I could probably do once or twice and then I'd probably have the idea in place but other ones ones that I'm not as comfortable with I might have to do multiple times I might even have to do four or five times I could if I want change these column names to for example first PMT questions I don't know if there is maths for PMT I can't remember it depends what you want to do to be honest and as you can see it's the same thing for all these subjects mainly and I've kind of shuffled some stuff around depending on the subject so for the Englishes, English Lit and English Lang I've got the different main sub areas in the language and lang literature exams so for literature the different texts that you go through and then for language the different questions I split them all apart and for each time you practice it you can make a note of the date so let's assume you're just not good at the Shakespeare so like Macbeth or something right you put a two on it and then today you decide to actually do a bit of revision for it so today is the 10th of March if I do a question on Macbeth so I do an entire essay plan or something like that I could put 10th March here so 10th of the 3rd and it automatically converts to March 10th so I can see the last time I did it and hopefully that could motivate me if I haven't done something in a few weeks to go back to and do another plan on it or another essay and then you've got like biology chemistry physics here I don't really need to go through all of this but it's just the different topics and I've kind of like separated them with the colors and stuff this time I've got the strengths again so one to five every single time and I've split the sciences into understand memorize and practice okay so so first you might need to understand the topic then go to memorizing it so like making flashcards whatever you do to memorize that's why I do and then practice actually doing the practice for it you might want to put multiple tabs for practice that's what I would probably do but once again the template is there you can tweak it however you like so that's that's up to you to be honest and that's it that's literally it this is just here to have an idea of where you stand with every topic and this will give you an idea on how confident you feel for every subject because you're looking at all the topics at once at a time and then we move on to our past paper tracker now this is the exact same as it was last year nothing's different so if you want to skip to the actual nine week plan you can just go to this timestamp right here but I'll just go over how this works so every time you do a past paper I want you to log it on this past paper tracker so let's assume you did a past paper in maths paper one pure right and you get 74% so each time you actually write a percentage down it color coordinates itself I said that and then it didn't do anything I had to put the percentage sign obviously so depending on how well you did you get a different percentage color um, and if I do like that it's just fully black and if I do nine percent is like quite a strong green if we go back to our 74 percent here we got 59 out of 80 so you just put your own scores in right so each time you do a past paper you write your own score you write the exact paper it was you write the date and then you write some targets you could add some more stuff here as well if you want but that's like the main things and then you could put a link to the paper as well in case you want to go back over it another time but overall you should get an array of different like colors and stuff and you can at a glance see which areas need more practice on and exactly in terms of past papers where you're not doing very well in terms of the past paper practice itself 
well. And over here, instead of having English Lit as past papers, I split them all into the different texts again. For me, I only ever did the practice for English Lit on a question by question basis. So I'd do one essay one time and do another essay another time. It would always be very separate and I'd be focusing on each separately. So that's, that's what I would do for them. Then we move on to the weekly planners. I've already written some stuff here. So let's just remove this. So this one has probably changed the most out of everything. So I've kind of shuffled some stuff around here. So we're going to begin with the topics over here, the weekly topics, right? So this is a bit similar to weekly dump from last year as well. Basically, at the very beginning of each week, you go back to your subject topic list and look at which topics you're the weakest at. Then you'd write a list of those weak topics here, the ones that you want to focus on in this week. So if these boxes aren't enough for you, you can just continue going at the bottom here. As you can see, it just fills in automatically. And then for each topic that you write, you have to write a task as well that you're going to do to fix that topic or at least make the strength for it go up even one more. We also on the right of that have this area over here. Basically what this is for is just to order your different subjects that you have for GCSE because you have quite a lot to order them in terms of how well you think you do if you start the paper at that moment. So if your aim is to get eight or nine for every subject if you were to sit every single paper which of these are you the most likely to do that in and which of these are you the least likely to do that in just so you have an idea of which subjects you should put more focus on in the week or which subjects you seem to be stronger in now the main point of this is that every week you're going to be doing this again and again and hopefully those bottom couple of subjects should increase every single time and should move up and then some new ones should come down and then those ones should move up and it should be a cycle that just continues going and then so we have those two areas there then we have the main aspect of the revision plan so you have this section here which is the must and you have the should section so every day you should have one thing that you're definitely going to do and to get an idea of what things you're going to do each week that's where the weekly tasks down here are useful for so if you for example wrote that you need to do more practice on English language right and then your task to improve that and then what we can do is all the tasks that we're going to have down here are going to be distributed across the week so we're going to make this one our must task for the Monday right so we're going to write here watch and make notes on every question from one to five and that's the task that we're going to have to do and you can see it automatically goes red because it's the task that we need to do for that day basically as the weeks go by the must section becomes larger and larger just very slightly each couple of weeks overall and to the point where at the end it just takes up the entire thing because at the end hopefully you should be at a stage where you can do the tasks easily at the beginning it might be difficult to get yourself into the swing of revision and you shouldn't really revise that much at the beginning right the reason that i do this nine week revision plan isn't so you do six hours a day every single week from now until the real thing that's just silly it's so you can start slow and you can slowly build it up so then when you do get to your exams you're not overwhelming yourself that's literally the only reason so you're doing a tiny bit each day right if you only have one task that you're focusing on each day it's nowhere near as difficult to do it's so much easier to not procrastinate on that task so that's going to be the one task you're going to have to do no matter what in that day right and then you can also put other tasks here that you want to do but you don't necessarily have to do and these tasks are also going to come from the top topics to improve on down here right so the tasks that you write down here all of those are going to be the tasks that you write up here now ideally even if you don't complete the should tasks for the day ideally you want to complete those tasks in the week you don't want to leave any tasks at all anywhere to just not be completed because that's just a waste right so if you do write two tasks here you should eventually across the week be like able to complete them otherwise you'll start seeing things build up and you won't get as much progress out of it and if you do want more tasks which i don't recommend but you can still do it you can just add more boxes here right automatically it fills in for you so it's not it's not that hard to do so and then let's assume you like you do your tasks or whatever and it's now Tuesday so Monday's over you click the box at the left and as you can see it automatically grays everything out which is quite cool so that's literally it for the plan itself it's that basic there's not really much going on to it I mean I guess we have the daily tasks at the bottom here but that's pretty self-explanatory so any tasks that you want to do every day such as like flashcards or something those you can just have as a checklist at the bottom so you keep on doing those each day those tasks shouldn't be your must tasks the must tasks should be specific things you do for a certain area in a subject right not just do flashcards and also there's some weeks here which are going to be during exams which if you do want to continue using this plan you can still do that so that's it for the GCSE one now we're going to move on to the A-level plan and how you can use that one to do the best in your A-level exams so if you have your A-levels or AS exams coming this is going to be the plan for you this one's also down below in the description if you want to check it out this is going to 
going to be my one that I'm going to be using. So best of luck to all of you guys who are seeing your A-levels this year with me. Um, but let's just get straight on with it. So the idea of both of these, so both the A-level and GCSE one are still the same. And what you're doing for both of them are the same. But I've geared this one more towards the way you have to revise for A-levels because it's slightly different to GCSE. So I've made the topics here a bit clearer for A-levels just because it's easier to find topic lists in A-levels than it is for GCSEs for some reason. In terms of like, you can see everything is numbered and it's very clear. So I've used the textbook topics for maths here, for example. But you can always change this depending on what you use and what you find useful and if you do a different example or whatever. So we begin with the strength tabs. So this is where you write one to five, how strong you feel with a topic. And just like the GCSE one, if you put a one anywhere, you're gonna get this big exclamation mark. And that's gonna show that you need to focus on this topic. I don't know why I put that on straight line graphs, but um, hopefully the fact that it's like distorting the page around it should catch your eye and make it so you wanna practice that topic. Then I've got some columns here. And these are the type of things that I do when I'm revising for math. So I usually start with the mixed exercise. This is after I watch videos. I'd only really watch videos on a topic if I just really don't understand it. But most of the time I'd go back to my notes and my practice questions and I'd get an idea of how to do it just from attempting those. But by all means, you could put a column here on like watch playlist first and then you can do whatever. It's up to you what you want to name these columns. So for me, it's mixed exercise. Whenever you tick anything, it goes like this nice green, which is quite cool. Then practice book, then PMT, then Mass Genie. And then also one thing that's really important about A-levels is you're constantly going to have to be reviewing the same things over and over, right? So I've also got this tab here, which is the last reviewed. So if I did algebraic expressions like today, right, I'd write here 10th of the third. So that's 10th of March. And as you can see, it automatically formats itself. So that is going to be an idea for me to know when I need to go back over a topic because it might have been like a month since I've done a certain topic because there's so many of them, you have to constantly have them in a rotation so you don't forget anything. Then we have the biology and chemistry sections here as well. And I've also got this blank one here that you can add your own thing to. For bio and chem, I've got the same sort of structure. I've got the topics, then I've got the strength again, and then I've got workbook and PMT. I, I really want to do like three sets of PMT. That doesn't mean complete all the PMT questions three times, but like attempt PMT until I'm comfortable three times, right? Because I'm not going to be able to complete all the PMT questions in one sitting. I need to spread that over and, and do it like constantly and over rotation. That's always the most important thing with these. I've also got the required practicals at the bottom here as well. So as you can see, nothing too special when it comes to the subject topic list. Everything's laid out for you. If you want to tweak anything, that's up to you, but this is like the base template for you and that's it. Now we're gonna move on to the past paper tracker. This is the exact same as the GCSE one, as the one last year. All you do is once you've done a paper for something, I don't know why I have chemistry as two papers. That should be three papers. I don't know why this is the way it is. What you're trying to do at the end with this past paper tracker is to have lots of different colors for every one of your subjects. And so you can at a glance just see exactly what areas you need to focus more on. If for example, in paper twos for maths, you're not really doing very well for some reason. I don't know why that would be because both paper one and paper two are pure, but yeah, that's the past paper tracker. There's not really much else to say. Make sure you check it out. There are instructions in the Google Sheets itself as well. If you are a bit confused on how to use it, we're going to now move on to the actual plan plan itself. We're going to start off with the area over here, the topics to improve in the week. Now I've already written a few here just as an example, but as you can see, if you continue writing more topics down here, they fill in by itself. So don't worry about having just that set amount of space to write everything in. But what you're trying to do, looking at the subject topic list, you're going to try and write certain topics that you seem not to be doing very well in and topics that you're going to now focus on in this week. So for example, binomial expansion I've written here. So tasks to improve that topic would be something like finish mixed exercise on binomial expansion, right? Something like that. When we actually begin the week, right? So for example, on Monday the 11th, we're gonna put that one as our must task, which means that we're gonna have to do it in this week. So finish mixed exercise. So now that means that in that day, my one priority is to make sure I get this task done. If nothing else happens, as long as I get this task done, that's okay. So then I have the should tasks here, which are tasks that you don't have to do, but you should do as it says. The idea is that whatever tasks here that you don't manage to do, you should still try and achieve to complete by the end of the week, right? All the tasks that you write here are going to be tasks that have come from your weekly um, dump that is down here, right? So you want to make sure that every task there goes on here and that every single one of those does end up getting completed. If not, you're going to have to start bringing them to the next week. And as you can see, that's going to be a problem. If you do have more tasks that you want to write, you can just fill it in like this. So it's very similar to the GCC plan where you can do the exact same thing. And also, if I just write this again, 
again here. Once the day is over, you can just tick this off and you can see everything grays out. So that's quite cool as well. And then also lastly, we have these daily tasks down here, which is just simply any task that you want to do every single day. So for example, for me, I want to make sure I do flashcards every single day. That's something I would put down here. So I just make sure that I'm always completing that task as I go through the day each day and I uncheck it and I check it again the next day. And that's basically what that is. But you don't have to use that. You can use an external to-do list or something for that one. The main idea is the plan over here and the weekly tasks down here. Those are two main important things. And as you can see, as you go across the week, the must proportion, right? The must task proportion ends up increasing. And it's to the point where near the end, you literally just have must task. You're just gonna have must, 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 must. Now for me, my first exam doesn't actually start on the 13th of May, which is the first beginning week for both A-levels and GCSEs, I think. But for me, I think my first exam starts all the way in June. So that means that on top of this nine week revision plan, everything else, I can then gear towards specific exams, right? So I'm gonna have an entire month on top of this where I can revise and hopefully that month is gonna be one with very little stress because of all the revision I've done beforehand. Now, I don't recommend doing like 20 hours of revision each day, right? This is not what this is for. As I've said with my GCSE one, it's really important to use this plan to slowly build everything up because at this point, you might be at a stage where you barely do anything, right? And that's okay. You shouldn't really be doing much anyways at this moment, but you need to start making a start with everything, right? So if you haven't started this, is the time to start doing things so that's basically what I'm trying to say with this plan and then by the end you should hopefully have done everything and made sure that your subject topic lists are as high as possible so yeah that's it with the plans if you found this useful or know someone else that might find this useful share this to them hopefully the plans could help them or help you and I'll see you guys very very soon thanks again for watching and clicking on this video whether you've been here for a long time or you've just clicked on my video and this is the first video you're seeing thanks a lot and I'll see you guys very very soon I hope best of luck for your exams or the GCC A levels end of years whatever exams that you may have and I'll see you guys next week bye for now